There's nothing like reminding us that we are a tourist destination like the holidays. Coming up through the next few months, we are going to have people from all over the country and all over the world that descend upon Orlando and either decide, will they stay in a hotel or an Airbnb? And so if you're staying here or you're thinking about buying an Airbnb, I'm going to go through four of my favorite neighborhoods, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. So stay tuned. By the way, my name is Ken Posick, and if you haven't been a subscriber on my channel yet, I put out videos every single week, multiple times a week, around real estate, theme parks, and living in Orlando. So hit subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get into the video. All right, so all four of these neighborhoods are amazing in their own right. They've got good and bad, and I can kind of look at either way, depending on what you're looking for as an owner or somebody that just wants to stay and have a good time. The first neighborhood I'm gonna talk about today is Reunion, Florida. This is actually technically Kissimmee, Florida, and it's just south of Disney. And so really easy access, one of the things you're gonna love. And here's a few other reasons why I love this neighborhood. One is you've got a massive array of options if you are looking to either stay or buy in the neighborhood. You've got condos and townhomes and small small homes that are four or five bedrooms, all the way up to mega mansions that are newly constructed on the golf course, 14, 15, 16 bedroom homes that you can bring your whole family and have a really great time. The neighborhood also has remarkable amenities. It's gated, it's got three golf courses, it's got a water park, it's got just amazing kind of things. But if you are an owner, and here's probably the only downside that I see to Reunion, is that the HOA fees and the membership fees can eat up at your ROI, your return on investment when you're buying an Airbnb. So you've got the HOA fee, but then really to get all of the access to everything in the neighborhood that you would want, you have either two other memberships to upgrade. You've got the social membership, which gives you a lot of amenities, or the golf membership, which gives you the ability to golf on all three golf courses. And so something to think about if you're thinking about staying here or buying Reunion, number one. The second neighborhood that I would suggest if you're looking to buy an Airbnb or if you're thinking about staying is Champions Gate. Now Champions Gate is down in Davenport and it is a bit of a hike. I would start with the negative of the neighborhood in that it is one of the farther places to get to. Depending on I-4 traffic and the traffic to get all the way back to the neighborhood, it could be 30 to 40 minutes away from Disney depending on the day. That being said, the neighborhood itself is amazing. It's gated, it's got a ton of amenities, it's got the Oasis pool, they're building other pools in the neighborhood, and the majority of the neighborhood is zoned short-term rental. But what if you just want to live on vacation year-round and you're looking to buy a second home? Well, Champions Gate actually has a complete separate section that doesn't allow Airbnbs. And so if you're looking for the resort-style neighborhood, but you don't want people coming and going all the time, that might be a really good neighborhood for you to consider. Again, it's close to everything. And I think that as Davenport matures and Claremont continues to mature with the 27 corridor, Champions Gate will get more and more popular as time goes on. All right, so the third place that I wanna talk about is many times overshadowed by the first two that I just talked about or the fourth one that I'm getting ready to tell you about as well. And that is Windsor Hills. Here's the reason why I love Windsor Hills. It's close to Disney. It's 10 minutes or so away from Disney. Super short drive over to get to Legoland, Universal the other way. And it's got a lot of great amenities. It's gated, it's got a beautiful pool. It's got a little shop inside there. You can get some food, grab and go kind of stuff. Everything you would need right inside the neighborhood. It's also got a really low HOA fee. So whether you're on the condo side or the single family side, it's one of the more affordable places to be. Now, the reason why you might not want to buy in here is that the whole place was built kind of in the mid 2000s, 2004 to 2008. And so the neighborhood does need a lot of updates. Now, they take really great care of the amenities inside the neighborhood, but individually, the houses might need a little bit of updating. Roofs, windows, kitchens, baths, flooring, and that kind of thing. So while you might get a really great deal, you might need to invest in it to be able to get the highest average night rate. And that's okay because I think location matters more than anything. And if you're looking at what's going to ride the ups and downs of the market in general and in the future, it's the location that matters most. Mark 
Margaritaville. Now, Margaritaville is amazing in so many ways and probably has only one or two negative things about it. Let's start with the positive. Number one is the location of this place. It's right off of 192 and 429. You can literally see Animal Kingdom from the front of the neighborhood and all of the redevelopment going on up and down 192 makes this area really advantageous whether you're staying there for a night or months and months in your own villa. And so the location, amazing. You also have a lot of resort style amenities within the neighborhood from the pool to the main building that has restaurants and just a lot of things that you would feel like if you're on a massive resort. Conversely, Reunion and Champions Gate and Windsor Hills, they feel like a suburban, really nice neighborhood with really nice amenities. But this Margaritaville is set up to feel like kind of more of a hotel sort of resort vibe more than anything else that we have here in Central Florida, at least until Evermore opens up. So make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on that. But Margaritaville, in itself has a lot of different products. They've got a condo tell product, which is the Embassy Suites by Hilton, where you can get like a two bedroom, two bath, thousand square foot condo, rent that thing out while you're not there. Kind of those things start right now in the mid fives all the way up. And then you can have the villas. Now these houses are individual single family homes, but they have no garage. That's one of the ways that you know it's more for resort instead of year round living. Now let's talk about maybe one of the one or two things that would prevent you from buying a place at Margaritaville. Now the HOA fees and really the management fees will eat up your ROI. So if you're thinking about buying a place because you wanna have the best cash flow in all of the Airbnb market, Margaritaville is probably not for you. If you're thinking about location and you're thinking about amenities and you're looking at kind of the brand of Margaritaville as something that's really attractive to you and your bottom line's not as important, then maybe Margaritaville's for you. Orlando has a massive amount of neighborhoods that lend themselves to Airbnbs that are either allowed to or zoned as Airbnbs. And so if you're thinking about buying or selling a house here in Central Florida, my team and I would love to help. I've got partners of mine on my team that specialize in the Airbnb game, can introduce you to short-term rental managers, help you with ROI calculators and all that stuff. So make sure you reach out info at positgroup.com and we'll see you guys on the next video. Shoo.